Sansei Ndotnmuk, Tawau, welcome to our presentation. Our presentation today is on the Nutomuk project, which translates to One Mind, One People. And today we're here to talk about relationship and community-based Indigenous language revitalization in Canada. Next slide. We wanna begin by acknowledging with respect the land and the language of the Hawaiian people. Although we would much rather be there with you today, we're all safely sheltered at home um, in each of our respective territories, but really want to acknowledge the wonderful, amazing work that the Hawaiian people do and uh, the work that you've done to bring together this conference that we so very much enjoy um, every couple of years and we hope to be able to join you again in the future. Hi, hi. I'm joined today um, by a couple of colleagues, but I'll start by introducing myself. Onawa McIver, Nisidi Gasun, Genosio Sipi Nida, Norway House, Cree Nation. My name is Onawa McIver. I'm an associate professor in Indigenous Education, and I'm Muskego Ainanu, which it translates in English to Swampy Cree. And I'm a grateful visitor in the Kwangan and Sanchothan speaking territories here on southern Vancouver Island. I'll turn it over to my colleagues to introduce themselves. Um, and just before I do that, I'll acknowledge also that Blair Gold uh, from Mi'kmaq country is uh, part of this presentation, but not able to join us today, as well as Dr. Peter Jacobs, who's Squamish um, and currently on sabbatical. Hi, hi. Ty. It's great to see you in the uh, called Kusetin Thanas and Chath and Sness at Chasles Nat Kusetinich e Kuchatlal. Hello, everybody. My name is Ty Swallow, and I help facilitate language revitalization at the Kusetinich School Board. Wat Gwenu Horado, Se Wagwego, Gwenu Shiosta, Neon Gets, Wagunyatung, Ganyuk de Haga, Niwakun Jodo, Quintege Nidiwagano, Dano Quintege. I'm Kelly Hill, um, Executive Director at the Jijunha Ungawana Language and Cultural Center in Tyndinega. I'm Turtle Clan of the Mohawk Nation and I live um, in Kuntege. Nyawa. Hey, hey. So I'm going to tell you um, a bit about our partnership and some of the core activities of the partnership, and then we'll shift into talking about some of the partner research and highlighting a few examples. And Callie and Ty will speak to their community partnership uh, research projects directly. So the Nutomuk partnership is a community university research partnership. So this is a partnership between the University of Victoria and nine community or organizational partners across the land now known as Canada. It's Indigenous led and Indigenous governed. These are two principles that are critically important to all of us. It's a seven year project and we're about halfway through that project now. The funder, the acronym is known in Canada as SHRC and the long form of that is Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. Um, which we're very grateful to their for to them for their funding. Um, next slide. The next slide shows uh, a map, as tiny as it might be, um, of all of the partners uh, that have joined together with us. So starting from the West Coast, we have the Hsanic School Board ties here today uh, representing and Chief Atom School um, near Chase, BC, First Peoples Cultural Council, which is a provincial organization, but is also based here in Victoria, the Decho First Nations, which is in the Northwest Territories, Blue Quills University College in Alberta. Moving over to Ontario, we have um, Cali's community in Tyndanega Territory, Kenjigawan Teg, which is an Anishinaabe organization that serves many different communities. We have the Mi'kmaq partner um, in Nova Scotia, as well as the Ganawage Education Center in Quebec. Here's a picture of most of our partners. I think most of our partners are represented. This is uh, a couple of years back when we gathered at an annual SILS conference, uh, the Stabilizing Indigenous Languages Symposium was held in Bukani territory, Blackfoot country.
country near Lethbridge, Beast, uh, Alberta that year. And this is just to give you a visual representation of all the wonderful people who make up our partnership. So the heart of this partnership, what it is focused on is adult language learning or adults contributions to language revitalization. And the reason why this collection of people and these partners have come together is that we came to understand that we know that our children are our greatest resource and our treasures and our future in language revitalization. We all understand that. But we also understand that adults have been really left behind in many ways in the field of language revitalization. And that adults are really hold tremendous potential to contribute to the revival of Indigenous languages in Canada and elsewhere. We know that we need a small army, a lot of new adult speakers to get the job done. And these powerhouses are going to be parents, young grandparents who might be raising their grandchildren or helping to raise their grandchildren, but also teachers, curriculum developers, and many, many others. And so we can't leave the responsibility of reviving and continuing our languages only on the shoulders of our children. We need to find ways to include adults and to help adults to become speakers or return to being speakers in the case of latent speakers in order to really ensure that our languages continue into the future. Next slide. So this slide shows um, what we think about as the theoretical framework for the whole partnership. And so as we were building this together some years back, it started to come together in kind of the formation of a house. That's how it felt for us. And so Dr. Peter Jacobs and I were kind of drawing, literally drawing it out on the back of a napkin, you know, how most good ideas happen, especially in Indigenous circles, usually over coffee in some coffee shop. And so this is how it started to come together for us. You can see that the roof of the house is the adult Indigenous language learning, like I just talked about. But if you focus your attention on the purple and the green rooms of the house, is the way I think about it, I think about these as the kitchen and the living room, kind of the heart and the, of the home of the house. Um, sites of learning and teaching in the purple space are things like mentor apprentice programs, adult immersion programs, language houses, um, but not exclusively those things, but places where adults are learning and uh, being taught the language. In the green space is a space where adults are contributing. And what happens in our communities is that often, as soon as an adult expresses any interest whatsoever or any aptitude for language learning, they're almost immediately thrust into a service role in their community. And so these two rooms of the house are quite simultaneous in language revitalization work where those same adults that are learning in the heart in the kitchen are also contributing in the living room. They're working in the language nest, they're working in K to 12 immersion. They might be doing family-based immersion themselves where they're really trying to create um, a site of immersion in their own home. They might be curriculum developers or doing other kinds of resource development for their community. The middle part, I think, which I think of as a pillar, is assessment. And this is something that's of great interest to many of our partners is how do we know if the efforts that we're making are making a difference? And that's up to us as Indigenous people to decide exactly what that looks like. But it is something that's of great interest to all of our partners, I think, is how do we measure in a way that's meaningful to us, whether the efforts that we're making are making a difference. Because all too often I hear people say, we've been doing the same thing for 25 years. So we've been doing the same thing for 30 years and we have not created any new speakers here. And so assessment can help us to understand that more quickly and then to change some of the ways that we might be approaching and spending our efforts and especially the really precious time that we have left with some of our best speakers to make the most of the time that we have with the resource people who are available to us. 
the red bar across the top or the ceiling um, is the acronym is NILA, the Nutomo Indigenous Language Learning Atlas, which I'll talk more about um, in a few slides. But that's a project that's really about creating a virtual gathering place for Indigenous people to share resources and ideas. And then finally, the floor or the foundation of the house is about finding links between language, health, and well being. And this is something that was of great interest to all the partners when we were building the project and something that remains um, really near and dear to many of our partners' hearts. Hi, Hep. Next slide. So I'll just speak really briefly to the governance structure. Um, what's important to us is that this is, as I said before, Indigenous led, but also that the partners are the ones who are governing uh, the funds and governing really the direction of the policies and various um, kind of documents that are coming out of the, of the grant. And so you've got at the center an executive committee, so myself and Peter as project directors and a project manager, but then the blue circle identifies um, that we have nine core partners and each of them have accompanying either elders or elder speakers who they consult with. Um, they may come to the meetings or they may not. They may just be there as a resource person to them. And those and that those folks form a governance council that actually guide all the major decisions of the grant. And so I often say, this is your money. I'm a facilitator of your grant. And so I'm here to be of service. And so that's what we try to do is to work together in a true partnership uh, that is really led by the, the community partners. Hi, hi. So on to NILA, the acronym that I shared with you, an Indigenous Language Learning Atlas. And the reason that we called it that is that we had originally envisioned it as a map, I think is the word that we were using. And then we learned through some scholarship uh, with some other folks that maps tend to be quite flat and static and they get created and then they're sort of there for perpetuity, and then you create a new map and then you put that up on the wall. Whereas an atlas is something that can be more like a living entity that has tabs that you can search, that has indexes. And so it's more kind of multi-layered. And so that's why it got that acronym. And the intention of it is to create a space for indigenous communities, advocates, researchers, and allies to engage and exchange knowledge and share and their own, but also learn about other people's successful language learning strategies. And so far, this has been um, envisioned to be in Canada because of the nature of our funding mainly. But we've had some overtures in the last year or so of folks, especially in the US, who have said, you know, we need to be mindful that that line between Canada and the US is, is really a colonial. Uh, fabrication that this is something that was created and and imposed upon us but that our languages are not divided that way that our communities and languages straddle that line and so we need to be more conscious of the language efforts um, in all of Turtle Island and so that's something that we're really deeply considering as we progress that project. This is just a, a small um, glimpse at where we're headed with this. This is a mock-up of the language atlas and what it might look like. So we do have to find a way, even though we don't want it to be a flat map, to find a way to represent um, the territory and then find a way to represent the folks in the territories who want to be represented in the atlas and to have information for their to share, but then for others to access and to access each other um, and to build networks this way. So this is just our first stab at that. So we'll shift now into um, offering just a few highlights. So these are not all of the partner research projects that are underway, but just a few examples of uh, the projects that we're currently supporting. Um, and learning from our partners. So this is an example from Chief Atom School. And they're very much focused on um, increasing proficiency level 
proficiency levels and teaching efficacy of in-service immersion teachers. So what that means is that this is a community who has been focusing for many, many years, in fact, a couple of decades on the creation of new speakers. And they have reached a level where they are able to have an immersion school and a language nest and are doing amazing work. They're really seen as, as a shining light in the province of British Columbia where I live. And like some of the other communities um, that I'll share with you and others that we're, that we're not going to talk about today, um, they do have a concern though about what we think about as plateauing in language learning and where their teachers are reaching a level of proficiency that's just enough to teach at the level that they're teaching at in the schools. But then the teachers get so busy and so drawn into that teaching activity that they as a community realize that they need to learn how to support those teachers to also progress their proficiency. And so that's what their project is about is that they have a, they have a um, an initiative underway to help to support teachers who they would classify, I think, as intermediate speakers to be able to push past that intermediate speaking and proficiency level um, and to track that and to be able to learn what they can from that exercise in order to be able to repeat that again in the future. So the Ganawage Education Center is another partner who's doing something um, quite similar, actually. So their name of their project is Fostering Professional Growth and Teacher Effectiveness Through Pro-D Planning for In-Service Teachers. Um, but the heart of it is something very similar, that they are also concerned about plateauing uh, for teachers or even just the opportunity for professional development for immersion teachers and ensuring that they have mentorship and opportunities to continue to progress their skills as immersion teachers. And so again, it's an initiative that's already happening in the community and the research part that they're engaging with us through Nutalmo is to um, track that, document that, to witness that and be able to learn from that. What can they learn from this uh, Pro-D initiative about how they might be able to help their teachers to gain higher levels of proficiency and other kinds of skills that really will help to progress um, not only their own speaking abilities and teaching abilities, but then ultimately the children. Ultimately, they want to be able to see that benefit and the changes happening for the kids to be also able to be gaining higher levels of proficiency because their teachers are pushing themselves and getting better support um, in the roles that they're playing in the community. Hi, hi. And then finally, this is the last one I'll share and then I'll turn it over to Callie is our Mi'kmaq partners, um, Blair, who wasn't able to be with us today, is that they have a really successful mentor apprentice program. And this is not their first year. They've actually run this program a couple of times. Um, and so their mentor apprentice is a program that's quite popular in British Columbia and other places. It's something that we learned about through Le Leanne Hinton and came up from California. The language situation in BC and California is quite similar. I think that's why the, the program really took off here and became quite popular. But Mentor Apprentice is being tried out in other places around Canada as well. And so the Mi'kmaq people were one people that tried this out and, and were having some success with it. But um, Blair expressed to us that they also wanted to learn more about how they could improve that program through goal setting and through learning more about the context where it was more successful and also less successful. So the First Peoples Cultural Council is another partner who's also um, tracking some mentor apprentice outcomes and the Decho First Nation also has interest in tracking their mentor apprentice outcomes as well. So this program remains something quite relevant in the Canadian context for many Indigenous communities. And so we really um, feel very fortunate to be able to support that research and to continue to learn about this one program and be able to share that with others. Hi, hi. So I'll turn it over now to Kelly, who will talk about the research that they did in their community 
um, and then we'll turn it over to Ty to talk about their uh, community and then we'll wrap up from there. Hi, hi. Nyawa Onawa. Um, so in our community, we are one of several Mohawk communities. There are Mohawk people in at least seven communities within Ontario, Quebec, and New York State. And we are probably the poorest in terms of, of language in that we don't have any first language speakers in our community. So documentation of the language has been very important to us for many years, and I think that we say we're about 10 years ahead of the other communities in terms of language loss. So we've been thinking about this for a long time. Since 2013, we've been having a, uh, a language gathering and very grateful that we get first language speakers to come to our community from all of the other communities. And we'll spend a weekend with them and, and document them in, in talk. In this picture here, they're all sitting around a table. Uh, we give them a, a topic to speak about and, and they'll tell stories, we record it all, and we've, we've been collecting the documentation for a long time, but haven't had the opportunity to work with it. So with, within this research project, we were able to hire a research coordinator who then worked with the documentation, worked with the first language speakers. Um, we were able to do some more intimate gatherings with um, certain groups of people like a uh, mixed group of men, women, a group of just males and a group of just females and, and getting all that type of, uh, of language documentation in which then we could turn it into curriculum that uh, we can share with uh, teachers in, in adult programs and other second language learning situations because we also recognize the fact that um, we want our, our new speakers that are up and coming to sound like first language speakers. And so by working with the documentation and, and the nuances and the cadences that the first language speakers have in their spoken language is going to help our up and coming speakers. And as well, one of the other things that came out of this research project was that the research, the lead research coordinator um, journaled and tracked his, his own um, progression as he was working with the documentation. And he heard from many of the first language speakers that through that his language was really like it, it really progressed with him just working with the documentation so that was very exciting for us and um uh so yeah that's it, it was about documentation and um we'll continue hopefully to do some more research around that Yawa. hi hi thanks so much kelly over to you ty Hi Scott Kelly. Hi Scott and Ella. Um, yeah, so uh, Oak Center School Board is is in Victoria, and we've been running a um, language revitalization program for many years. Uh, we stand on shoulders of giants, as the saying goes, with uh, a couple of uh, elders here in this picture: Jacinton, Slumpton, and Celia. Um, so we run an immersion program um, that we started in 2013. Um, and then I've been following that cohort of learners and filling in the gaps as we go. Um, so, uh, and here we have uh, Panetch, who's the, the young fellow there who's working. Um, he's, he's been a real leader and he sends his regrets. Um, I know that uh, both him and I have been, been at this conference and, and we absolutely love it. And, and we, we miss you guys. Uh, behind me is, is the poster that we had presented in, in 2013, but, um, and we've learned a ton from the Hawaiians and from Chief Atom, and, and like Anawa was, was speaking about, our, the immersion teachers that we have coming in, um, they, they hit that plateau as well. And so our Natsongo research um, focused around developing our teachers to, to enhance their own proficiency to a much higher level. Uh, we kind of worked on three areas. One was the, um, um, the translation of the first Natsongo uh, tool that, that was uh, part of the um, partnership development grant. Um, so we did that and we've been using that as a way to assess our teachers and uh, how, the, how they're growing. Another area was looking at uh, trying to use a sort of root word uh, teaching tool, which um, 
is started off and it is, has only just realized, made us realize how much more we need to learn. And it's provided a lot, a lot of opportunity for us to grow. And then the, the third area is, is looking at Panetch and, and Jacinct and uh, teaching uh, the, what they're using is a, they're calling it a Sanchofen professional development. Um, and so what that is, is that our teachers will be working with our elders and our, and our higher speakers to every second week uh, to try to ramp up their proficiency and their, their levels um, as to, you know, try to break through the, those plateaus. Um, yeah, and then what it's done now is now that we finished this project, we started in 2017, um, it's kind of morphed into and grown into a project that we're calling Erkos Project, which is heading out to sea. And so it's a, it's a much larger project that this really helped stimulate us to move forward with. And we're actually presenting on this on Saturday, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's really looking at root words and prefixes and, and using that as a tool for learners. So. Anyways, I've, I've, I've spoken enough here and I wanna say I miss you all and aloha and mahalo. So we hope that we've um, been able to share something useful to you all today um, to tell you a little bit about our tremendous partnership and Callie and Ty and I are just three members of a really amazing group of people. So we're all here you know, speaking of standing on the shoulders of giants, you know, I'm standing amongst giants, just a wonderful, wonderful partnership that I feel so honored to be a part of. Um, we're just going to finish off with Robin is going to share our website in case anybody wants to just have any more uh, look at what we do, but I'll just say Nawawin, Miigwech, Hey Hey, Kananasko Mitnawaw, Masicho, Haiskasiam, Medu, Gela Kesla. Aloha. Mahalo. For more information, please visit our website, nataltnoch.ca.